the Himalayas are melting, and climate-related disasters are becoming more and more common in the greater Himalayan region. The rain fury has left nine people dead. Weak monsoons for two consecutive years. Over 100 houses have been washed away. A quarter of Bangladesh is submerged in flood water. And it's opened the floodgates for a mass migration problem. To ignore what's going on in the Himalayas is not just an environmental crisis, it is actually a humanitarian crisis. Just in five countries of South Asia, 63 million people are going to be displaced by 2015. The grim projection does not even include those who will be forced to flee sudden disasters. Migration in the region is nothing new, but climate change is adding fuel to the fire. So what role does climate change play in driving migration in the Himalayan region? And why is the warming of the Himalaya potentially so catastrophic? When we think of the Himalaya, majestic images of Mount Everest might come to mind, but it's so much more than that. The Himalaya region is one of the largest storage of frozen water in the world. The Himalaya is the water lifeline for nearly a quarter of the global population. The mountain ranges feed 10 major river systems through its glaciers, snow, and rainfall. These rivers and mountains don't belong to one nation. Instead, they flow across borders, uniting the greater Himalayan watershed of Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, China, India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan, providing drinking water, power, and irrigation for a population heavily dependent on agriculture. They all rely on the waters flowing down from the glaciers of the Himalayas. But that water is under threat. With more frequent droughts and unpre unpredictable rain, water insecurity is increasing by the day. What's happening in the mountains has trickle-down effects all the way down to the sea. There is definitely the rise in temperature and this change in uh, precipitation pattern. There are fewer rainy days in the year, but when it does rain, it pours. In a state where 70% of the population is dependent on uh, subsistence-based agriculture, which is rain-fed, any changes in the rainfall has an impact on food security and household income. And third is is the, the glaciers are melting in alarming rate. Even if we compare the global warming to 1.5 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius is this could be devastating in different ways. It could result in potentially catastrophic glacial lake outburst floods, where lakes holding glacial meltwater overflow and burst. It could also lead to droughts in the long run. So when wow. those, those glaciers disappear, uh, which they have been doing now for, for quite some time, um, yeah. people have, are having to find alternate sources of water. We have to understand how the locals uh, in the Himalayan uh, region have survived for, for thousands of years. Pastoralism, agriculture. And it's getting harder to survive. There are villages more towards the west of, um, of Nepal who completely have to um, move out because there's no water there. Due to the uh, water crisis in the, in the Himalayan region, there, there has been livelihood loss, there has been crop loss, there, is, there are changing seasonal patterns of, uh, of agriculture, so which, uh, which is forcing people to, to, to leave their houses. That is kind of a push factor for the, for the uh, local communities, uh, mostly in the mountain region, uh, that they have to move away uh, for, 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 for their livelihood. And this point comes up again and again. Livelihood plays a huge role in migration decisions. I don't want to blame everything on, on, on climate change. I generally avoid using the term climate migrant. The climate uh, uh, issue is very closely related with the economic issue. Men have migrated from the Himalaya for centuries to escape poverty, sending money back home to their families. But because climate change is impacting livelihoods, it's creating even more migrants. Not to mention the thousands who are displaced from floods and disasters every year. But because the line between climate and economic factors is not always so clear, the actual number of climate-induced migrants in the mountains is unknown. But we can follow the melting glaciers downstream to Bangladesh, where the link between climate and migration is a little bit more explicit. Uh, floods, river bank erosion, waterlogging, drought, and salinity intrusion are likely to be exacerbated by the impacts of climate change. 
and therefore people driven by such events can be called as uh, climate induced migrants. They are different from the uh, economic migrants who are coming to the city with a vision, with some asset. As Bangladeshis flee the increasing number of disasters and floods, many end up in the slums of Dhaka, the capital, only to find more risks like overcrowding, extreme heat, flooding, and unclean water. They are living in unhealthy places, living in urban slums. They are mostly unaware about the destination where they are going. They are mainly migrating with the whole family. With all the young children, they have lack of contacts. That made them uh, more vulnerable to different uh, city-based hazards. And according to the World Bank, climate stresses might displace up to 13.3 million Bangladeshis by 2050, making it the country's biggest driver of internal migration. The government of Bangladesh is uh, very much aware about the situation. Even so, not enough is being done. Part of the problem is that climate-induced migration is so broad and complex that governments have yet to acknowledge its role in internal migration. The uh, recognition is not there yet. No one has any kind of uh, uh, policy at place how to deal with the climate migrations, uh, even within the country, forget about the outside the country. It's clear that it's a regional problem, but it's not too late. People in many of the places have not reached the threshold so that they are forced to migrate. There is there are still some scope to um, adapt, scope for adaptation. should think about decentralization of different services. There should be good schools, good hospitals, good uh, job opportunity is the, in the small townships also, so that people get attra attracted to those small townships. And while climate change can't be stopped, it can be an opportunity to develop rural areas, invest in livelihood security, and address internal migration patterns. Migration due to the climatic drivers, that is inevitable and that's going to increase in the near future. So the yeah, government should uh, take this issue more seriously than ever before.